Let's go live now to Labor MP Peter Khalil. He joins us from Melbourne this morning. Peter Khalil, thank you for your time. Is this a morning. sensible settlement proposal from Joel Fritzgibbon this morning? Morning, Laura. Um, look, uh, Joel is uh, perfectly entitled to put forward policy ideas and, and a vision that he has uh, about the direction we should change it. I think it's no surprise to anyone uh, in the media or anywhere else that uh, after we lost the election, we're reviewing our policies and what needs to be done. Um, I think, you know, you're asking my personal view. I mean, I know that my electorate uh, wants action on climate change, uh, wants to actually tackle this problem. We need to listen to the science. And the question really is, you know, the fact that the coalition, under the coalition, uh, emissions have actually risen, uh, whereas when, when we were in power last, we actually reduced emissions. When we get to the next election, if we're successful at the next election, what those targets should be going forward to 2030 and to 2050, and that's a live debate that's happening now, and Joel's putting forward his views. One thing I will say about Joel, uh, I haven't seen the speech yet, I'm looking forward to it, is that he is very much right on point about the importance of transition and making sure that we have a really good just transition plan to make sure that people get jobs uh, in the new economy, if you like, the new energy sector uh, that is emerging with renewable energies and other alternative mm. forms of energy. Because that, we don't, we're, we're the party of the working class and we really need to look yeah. after our workers and, and make sure there's real jobs available. In many ways, Victoria is the front line of the climate debate, but Joel Fitzgibbon's electorate is the uh, front line of the jobs and coal debate as well. So he has seen uh, both sides of this. Uh, now, you said Joel's willing and able and entitled to put forward his proposal, but I think what he's saying is that even if Labor does get in at the next election, that's only eight years to achieve that 45% yeah, yeah. target. Is that a reasonable time frame? Um, and his proposal would take a bit of the heat out of the climate debate. Now, you could still have a more ambitious target to 2035 or 2050. Yeah. 350, yeah. Yeah, that's the point. I mean, I, I think the, the, the issue that we're all grappling with is the fact that under the coalition government, uh, emissions are actually rising. So when you get to 2022, you know, this is a long way out, by the way, um, and very speculative, but if there was a change of government, if we were successful uh, in, be, in forming government, you'd, you'd be looking at what kind of targets we could realistically meet uh, going forward. And so this is a live debate. I mean, this is a, a discussion that's being had with our shadow ministers, the shadow cabinet, with, with our caucus as well, which we, we, we're discussing. So um, we, we will work on these policies, obviously, in the lead-up to the next election and, I think, land on what we think is the best way forward for the nation and, and for the globe. What do you think is the best way forward, though, uh, Peter Khalil? A more sensible settlement like this or sticking to what you took to the last election? Well, I, I think... I mean, I, I, I don't have any doubt about the science. It's overwhelmingly clear that um, we have to act to ensure that we get under 2% uh, warming, but even 1.5%. But there's so many different ways you can do that. And, and because of the long timelines, you know, we're talking about redu a reduction emission target, obviously, but we're also talking about investment in renewables. We're talking about how we transition into what fuels out of coal. Uh, we're talking about the export of coal as well, thermal coal, not, not coking coal. So Because yeah. that contributes to the global emissions as well, and that's the bigger picture. So there is a lot there that, needs to, that we need to yeah. go through. And, and you're right, if we settle on a target for 2030, that might help us set up for a target for 2050 uh, that's more ambitious. OK, so w what are you saying? That 45% by 2030 is perhaps too high, but you you're not sure about the 28%, it might be too low? No, I, I don't. I actually don't know right now. I mean, we're in the middle of these conversations. Joel's suggesting we... We have a 28% target in, uh, uh, in reducing emissions by 2030. Our current policy is 45%. We may look at a, a target at 2035. Um, we may look at a, a, a more ambitious target out to 2050. We don't, I, we don't have the answers right now. We're in the middle of a policy discussion and a policy development. We have to look at the evidence, evidence base. We have to make some calculations about where we might be at, given this government's dragging its heels. Um, you know, emissions are actually rising under this government and will probably continue to rise uh, up until the next election. So we have to take all of that into consideration. Do you think a bit of bipartisanship here, at least on that 2030 target, might take a, a bit of heat out of it on, on, um, in terms of the Labor side? Oh, you won't Laura. Be, yeah, but you, but you won't be... Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Bogged, but, bipartisanship. Let's no, do but, it. But you won't be bogged <laughs> under uh, by, you know, being questioned about the cost of your more ambitious target to 2030, and you can put more you, heat on the government you... about emissions rising. Yeah. Do you really think the problem is that we haven't tried to be bipartisan? I mean, if you recall in the lead-up to the last election, 
There were five, maybe yeah, but four bipartisanship different isn't energy, convincing the government to come to your policies. way of thinking, right? <laughs> no, no. We were willing to go to them. If you recall, we said Not on we were an willing to sit down with you, you on the energy guarantee, on the energy policy. Just tell us what you want to do. Their own side killed it. Like, you know, you had the right-wingers and the nut, the nut jobs on their own side who are basically climate change denialists basically killed it. They, they cost... Uh, under yeah. Turnbull and, there, and, then, and then later under Morrison. So we did everything we could to, to reach a bipartisan position for the good of the nation. And uh, they, they killed it internally in their own party room. Yeah, the NEG, uh, look, it's a long debate. The NEG. There. We'll, we'll, we'll be here all day. But I just quickly want to ask you about a committee that uh, you are part of. This is the yeah. J. Scott uh, Committee. And where Labor might end up on ratifying <laughs> the trade agreements uh, through Parliament. I know yep. it's at a committee, so uh, please don't yep, give me that privilege. line. Is Labor, <laughs> is Labor going to eventually end up supporting these crucial trade deals? Well, there's two parts to your question. I mean, the first, you, you're right, it, it is part of the Parliamentary Treaties Committee, so it's under privilege. So the, the report is actually coming out today, so the suspense, you won't have to wait that long to see what's in there. But um, the, our Labor Party caucus obviously also has to come to a decision about um, the support for those free trade agreements. Actually, it's really about supporting the enabling legislation which cuts tariffs under those agreements. The agreements have already been negotiated and signed by the government. This is simply us uh, within Parliament uh, either supporting the enabling legislation which mm. just cuts the tariff under that. So that's the decision that our caucus has to make in our shadow cabinet. But effectively, um, I can tell you, without telling you what's in the report, exactly what we fought for from the Labor perspective. I mean, we so think it's very important to have... you're dropping that opposition to the ISDS, it sounds like? Well, we fought very hard uh, for independent economic modelling. Uh, yes? We fought very hard. We, we fought very hard for, for... With respect to the I, uh, ISDS... The Indonesian, the old Indonesian agreement has old ISDS provisions, which uh, obviously we want to see removed or terminate that agreement. Is it uh, many a deal breaker, though? Well, as I said, the Labor caucus has to make their decision about their support for this. I'm not going to preempt um, a decision of all of my hundred odd colleagues or ninety odd colleagues. I can tell you the work that I did in the report was around independent economic modelling. It's around making sure that we get rid of the old ISDS provisions on the old Indonesian agreement, under making sure that there's consultation with business, a better consultation with okay. business and the union movement, uh, and, and also, frankly, around labour market testing. These are important elements uh, for us in our party platform. And the best you can do in a committee is really try and get that language and that work and get them into recommendations, frankly, in the committee.